So, uh, welcome everybody. Uh, this is our first webinar of our TFTC webinar series in 2021. Hope you all enjoyed the virtual TRB 2021. Today, I'm pleased to introduce my good friend, Dr. Sina Bahrami. Uh, Sina is a postdoc fellow at University of Michigan Ann Arbor, working with Dr. Yafin Yin. Uh, prior to that, he was a PhD student at University of Toronto. Uh, and before that, he did his uh, undergrad and master's at Sharif University of Technology in Tehran, Iran. Today, he'll talk about his latest research, uh, parking, manage parking management of automated vehicles in downtown areas. So it, I'm pretty sure that it will be an interesting presentation. The floor is yours, Sina. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Rafael, for the introduction and also giving me the opportunity to present our research on the parking management of automated vehicles in downtown areas. This research has been done here at University of Michigan with the help of my colleague Daniel Wignan and supervision of Professor Yafen Gin and also the support of Dr. Labertex from Toyota Motor North America. Before I start, I would like to mention that feel free to stop me during the presentation if you have a question and I would be happy to clarify things so we could move to the presentation together. Currently, uh, the parking is uh, one of the most inconvenient part of any auto trip. Before the pandemic, we could all remember an experience of searching for a pretty long time to find a parking spot and we decided to go to a popular destination such as a concert hall or movie theater and we spend a long time to find the parking spot. This study shows that people spend an average around 20 minutes to find the parking spot in the uh, downtown area of large metropolitans such as New York or Los Angeles. These people who are searching for parking usually slow down and start cruising around the block of their destination and uh, looking for a parking spot. Again, a study shows that around 30% of vehicles in the major arterial roads in the downtown areas are those who are searching for parking. These people who are searching for parking increase the congestion and exacerbate the, the congestion and the externalities that we see from the traffic and also the parking. For instance, they are increasing the air pollution from the traffic as well. But how the parking is going to change in the era of autonomous vehicles? Currently, when we travel from an origin to a destination using a conventional vehicle, we start searching for parking when we get close to the final destination. When we find the parking, we park the vehicle there and we usually walk from that parking location to the final destination. Because of this part of trip, which we usually like you know, walk between the parking location and the final destination, we need to find the parking spot in a close proximity of the final destination. When we are done, we walk back to the parking location, get into the vehicle, and we can drive to the next destination. However, in the era of automated vehicle, users are able to drive all the way from their origin to the destination, and then get out of their vehicle at the front door of their uh, destination, like what we do currently using a taxi or a ride hailing service. And then they can send the vehicle to find the parking spot in the driverless mode. Because the passenger or the user do not present in the vehicle, when the vehicle is searching for parking, the vehicle can park in a further or a strategic location, or even in a very extreme case, the vehicle can cruise for the whole activity time of the user. When the user is done, they can recall or summon the vehicle to come back to them and to pick up them, and then they can go to the next destination. So to a little bit summarize, to, for the automated vehicle in the near future, they have like different parking options. They can send the vehicle to cruise around the block or even searching for parking around their destination, or even they can send the vehicle to a parking infrastructure or part of sending it to home to wait for them. But if we have like a lot of vehicles who are cruising or searching for parking in a near a, a popular destination, we would see a, a congestion and a drop in the speed. So the goal of our study was to propose a framework to examine what is the parking choice of user in the era of automated vehicle. And we are interested to see how the uh, parking externalities are going to change in the era of automated vehicle due to the self-parking capability of autonomous vehicle. 
when we have such a framework, we can then investigate the effectiveness of different policies, such as uh, parking pricing, parking provision, or even the congestion pricing to internalize the externalities from parking. And finally, we can also uh, provide some optimal parking policies for privately owned autonomous vehicles. So the setting of our model is that we consider a downtown area in which a group of uh, a user coming to the downtown area using their privately owned autonomous vehicle to engage in activities with different activity time. These users are going to choose among the different parking options available to them, including cruising, parking in downtown, parking out of skirt, or even sending the vehicle to home based on their activity time with the goal of minimizing their total parking costs. Under the equilibrium condition, no user should be able to decrease their parking costs by unilaterally changing their parking choice. To get into the model, I, I, I'm starting by describing the cost of different parking options. I start by describing the cost of parking at home. Let's assume that the home of user is located at half a ledge from the destination or the downtown area. If the user decides to send the vehicle to park, in the, uh, uh, park at home, Two scenarios might happen depending on the activity time of the user. If the activity time is long enough, the vehicle is able to travel all the way back home, wait there, and then come back later to pick up its user. In that case, the vehicle has traveled a total distance of LH for a round trip from destination to home and coming back later to pick up the user. However, if the activity time of the user is not long enough and the user decides again to send the vehicle to home, the vehicle needs to return at some point during its trip towards home. In that case, the total distance that the vehicle is traveled can be calculated based on the time that it has traveled multiplied by the speed. We assume that the speed of a vehicle in their uh, way towards home is free flow speed. In that case, we can capture the total distance that the vehicle is, has traveled equal to, uh, to be equal to the activity time multiplied by speed, which is like free flow speed. Therefore, we can define the uh, cost of parking at home as the gamma h of t, which is a function of the activity time of the user. Rho d is the uh, travel cost per unit of distance. And the minimum function captures the two different scenarios for the travel time that I just described. Similarly, we can calculate the cost of parking in any out of scale parking facility. Again, if like, the parking is located at half a low from the destination, Two scenario might happen depending on the activity time of the user. But in this case, if the vehicle is able to reach to the parking facility and wait there, the user might have to pay some monetary value to that parking facility to use that. So the cost of parking out of skirt has two components. The first component, again, capture the travel cost to the parking facility. And the minimum function capture the two scenario, whether the vehicle is able to reach there depending on the activity time of the user or not. And the second term capture the cost that the vehicle or the user is going to pay to the parking infrastructure for using that. And tau o is the cost of out of skirt parking per unit of time. And the maximum function capture the time that the vehicle spend if it's arrived to the uh, parking facility or not. Then we can move on to uh, calculate the cost of cruising option. If the vehicle decides to cruise for the whole activity time of the user, the vehicle is going to circulate around the destination of its user. And the vehicle is traveling for the all uh, time of uh, user uh, activity. So the amount of uh, the, the distance that the vehicle has traveled in that case is the activity time of user t multiplied by a speed v of n, which we assume that the speed in the downtown area is a, a function of the accumulation in the downtown. So if like, there, there are more vehicle cruising in the downtown area, then we would see, for instance, a decrease in the speed. And also, we consider a second term for the cruising option, which is capturing the toll. And this toll, we define it in terms of the time-based toll. So if like, the, the, for the user has to pay a toll for the amount of time that the vehicle is in downtown area. Now, I, I can say why we are uh, thinking that uh, toll should be uh, time-based rather than like the uh, distance-based or cordon-based, which are familiar nowadays. For instance, the distance-based toll, which is mostly used in highways and the user are going to pay a toll for the amount of uh, distance that they travel uh, through a, a highway, cannot be used for the uh, increasing the cost of like cruising. Because if the network becomes congested, then the vehicles do not travel that much. 
And therefore, as the network will become more congested, that toll would decrease. Therefore, that toll would not be really helpful. Also, the, the cordon-based toll, which is mostly nowadays used for the uh, uh, tolling or controlling the downtown areas, cannot be helpful for the managing the automated vehicle in the future, because all vehicles, regardless of their uh, uh, parking choice, have to pay such a toll to first access to the destination and drop off their passenger. And even, for instance, uh, if they, they are going to outside to uh, park at home or even out of scared parking facility, they might have to pay again another toll to come back later to pick up the user. So those type of tolls are not helpful to increase the cost of cruising only without like increasing the cost of the other one. Therefore, that toll needs to be at the time based and be uh, look into how uh, it should be designed later in the, through the presentation. And finally, we can also calculate the cost of parking in downtown area. If the vehicle decide to uh, park in downtown area, the vehicle need to first find the parking spot and need to search for parking. And we show that parking search time with uh, TP. Uh, and the parking search time, again, it's also a function of like the utilization of parking, the behavior of the other user. And the two scenario again might happen when the vehicle decide to park in the downtown area depending on the activity time of the user and the parking search time. If the activity time of the user is shorter than the parking search time, the vehicle cannot find the parking spot and it's just cruising in the downtown area. Otherwise, the vehicle is able to find the parking and park there. So the three different components of the parking in downtown area is the first component capture the travel cost, the, 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 the uh, uh, cost that the vehicle incurred for traveling in downtown area searching for parking. The second term again captured that toll which I described for the cruising because even those vehicles who are searching for parking in downtown area also traveling in downtown and increase the congestion, they are uh, incur such a toll. And finally, the last term captured the cost of uh, parking in downtown area and tau P is the cost of parking in downtown and the maximum and minimum function here also captured the two different scenarios. As I told uh, in the previous slide, we uh, think that the speed in the downtown area is a function of the accumulation. I am sure everybody in this uh, uh, committee is familiar with the fundamental diagram, which relate the uh, flux of traffic with the speed and density for a lake. Previous study has shown that such a relationship even exists for a larger urban area. And therefore, such an assumption that we have that the speed in the whole downtown area is a function of the accumulation in downtown area could be justified. That way. That being said, we can get into the mathematical model for the parking choice of the users. In this uh, uh, formulation, X R of T is the number of users with the activity time T who choose parking option R. Gamma R of T is the cost of uh, uh, parking option R for the activity time T, and mu T is the minimum cost of uh, parking uh, for the user with the activity time T. The first three set of equation ensure that the user are choosing the uh, uh, option with the lowest cost and the option which is not used has a higher or equal cost to the option with the lowest. The fourth constraint is a straightforward concern about the conservation of demand, which means that the, of the user who choose different uh, 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 parking choices are equal to the number of user with the activity time t. Equation five is state the relationship between the speed and the accumulation in the downtown area. Equation six uh, also, uh, actually capture the, the accumulation in downtown area. The accumulation consists of three components. The first component capture the accumulation of those vehicles who are cruising in the downtown area. And these vehicles who cruise in downtown area present in the downtown for the whole activity time of their use. The second term capture the accumulation for those vehicles who search for parking in the downtown area and those vehicles contribute to the accumulation for the parking search time of their use, the, the, for the parking search time. And finally, the last term capture the accumulation for the background traffic. We think that there is like some background traffic who come to cross through the downtown area and these vehicles travel a fixed distance of uh, LB. But the amount of time that they present in the downtown area and contribute to the accumulation itself depend on the uh, speed of uh, uh, traffic in the downtown area. Equation seven state that the, this background traffic is a elastic demand and it depends on the travel time in the downtown area and also the 
congestion toll that we have in the downtown area. And finally, equation eight state the relationship between the, uh, for the uh, parking search time as a function of the parking utilization and the speed in the downtown area, how fast they can uh, travel between the adjacent parking spots in the downtown area. And here the P is the uh, total number of parking uh, provided in the downtown area. We can rewrite this mathematical model in forms of a fixed point problem to use some of the properties of fixed point uh, theory. Here the, the, the formulation and the equation are the same as the previous slide, but uh, because uh, we can use some of the, the fixed point problem, uh, for instance, here the lambda is a com compact convex set, and also we can show that F is a, a continuous if the parking search time is continuous, and then we sh can show that the there exists at least one equilibrium solution for the parking uh, uh, choice model. Uh, I, I would like to mention that the parking search uh, uh, function may not be continuous for some discrete distribution of the activity time of the user, but it is actually continuous for the continuous distribution of activity time of the user, and therefore the existence of an equilibrium solution is guaranteed. Also using the properties of fixed point problem, we can comment about the stability of the solution. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, by stability, I mean that uh, if the, we make a small perturbation into the system, whether the system return to its previous state or not. And the, the, based on the, the properties of fixed point problem, if we have a, the, the solution and we capture the, we calculate the eigenvalues of the JQB and matrix of F around that solution, and it be less than one, the solution is, uh, stable, otherwise it's not stable. To develop a solution methodology for uh, solving this fixed point problem, I, I, I would like to start by presenting a special case of this problem. In this special case, we assume that there is no parking spot in the downtown area, and therefore the uh, parking choice uh, set of the ABs decrease to uh, uh, cruising, parking out of scale, or parking at home, and also we assume that the background traffic accumulation in the downtown area is fixed. In that case, we can write the parking choice uh, model in forms of a mathematical model, which is very similar to the Beckman traffic assignment formulation. Uh, I mean, we can think of like the different parking option in this case as the routes that the user are going to take. For instance, the route is like uh, between an origin destination we have in the traffic, traffic equilibrium, but here, for instance, a route is whether the user is going to park at home or the other one is, for instance, out of scale. But if we look further into the objective function, we can see this objective function is a concave minimization function. And it's because the, the speed in the uh, uh, downtown area is negatively related to the accumulation. So it gives us the idea that the problem have multiple solution uh, which are uh, locally optimal and there is like one uh, globally optimum solution which happens at the uh, extreme points of the uh, feasible range. Then we can a little bit like look into the, the cost of the different like option to see what, where these like uh, extreme points happen. On the graph in the uh, right hand side, I'm showing the cost of uh, different uh, parking option uh, for the uh, activity time on the x-axis and the total parking cost on the y-axis. In this uh, uh, example, as you can see, for instance, up to the uh, activity time TCO, cruising has the lowest cost. And then from that point in the activity time up to TOH, the out of skirt parking become the cheapest option and uh, outperform the other one. And finally, for instance, home become the, the cheapest option. Therefore, if we can find this uh, in different points in the activity time, we can assign users to the different parking option. So uh, we look into this special case and we find that, for instance, the way that we define the cost of different option, three different scenario might happen. Because like the cost of home and out of skirt parking has like fixed slopes and only the cost of cruising has different slopes. So three different scenario might happen. Uh, based on the slope of the uh, cost of uh, cruise. And in each of them, we can find the, the limits on the speed for happening such a scenario. For instance, for the first scenario in which uh, the, uh, we see two option of either cruising or sending the vehicle home, we find the limit for uh, speed to 
see such a scenario to happen. And that speed limit is only a function of the input parameters to the model. And then we can also calculate the uh, uh, indifference point in the activity time of the use. But this indifference point is a, a function of the speed itself, which we do not know yet. And we can, uh, uh, I will show in a slide later that how we use that to solve the problem. But before getting there, if we look for the general case solution, because in that case also the uh, parking in downtown area is a function of the parking search time and it ha can have different slope, we have more scenarios. And if we uh, consider different scenario, we can see that for the general case, we have eight different scenarios and uh, uh, which has like a limit on the parking search time and also the speed. And then for each of these scenario, we can find the indifference point in the activity time of the user as a function of these two uh, parameters, speed and the parking session. But how we can uh, use these uh, indifference point to solve the problem? So we can assume that like uh, the speed and the parking search time under the equilibrium conditions satisfy one scenario. Then we can uh, calculate the indifference point as a function of the speed and the uh, parking search time, as I show, for instance, for one example in the uh, first scenario of the special case. Using this function, we can drive the number of users based on the distribution of the activity time as a, uh, who choose different option as a function of, again, the speed or the, the uh, parking search time. And we can replace that into the uh, speed and the parking search time equation. And instead of having like a fixed point equation, we can uh, decrease the problem in the special case to one fixed point equation and in the uh, general case, we can decrease the problem to two fixed point equation, which can be solved uh, numerically or uh, other methods very easily. And then when we solve those uh, fixed point equation, we can check the different solution of them and see whether they, they, uh, uh, they uh, satisfy the condition for that specific scenario. If they, they satisfy the, the condition, we can save that solution. Otherwise, we can disregard them and then we can move to the next scenario. Because we know all the scenarios and we can do that for all scenarios, we can find all the equilibrium solution for the problem. Then uh, uh, if we have like, we can check all the different solution, we can also uh, find one of the, the solution which has the best uh, result in terms of, the, for instance, social welfare. So we define a objective function which tries to uh, determine a policy whose worst case social welfare is maximum. And we define the social welfare uh, as the travel cost of those AV users who search for parking, plus the cost of those background traffic, and also the cost for pro providing parking in the downtown area. And this objective function is subject to the equilibrium concept, which was the model that I presented before. So uh, to a little bit like sense better how that uh, uh, solution methodology works, I would like to start here by presenting a, a numerical example for the special case that we have. Here uh, on the right hand side, we showed those like uh, fixed point equation, which I mentioned, and these three different uh, curves show the three different uh, scenarios. The blue curve shows the result for the uh, scenario one, the red one shows the result for the scenario two, and the uh, the yellow one shows the result for this third scenario. And these two dashed line shows the limits on the speed that we, are, uh, uh, we uh, could uh, calculate based on the input parameters. And the result of, for instance, the first scenario or the intersection of the blue curve with the line y equal to x is feasible if it, they intersect each other on the uh, left-hand side of the first uh, dashed line. For the second scenario, the solution to the uh, fixed point equation is feasible if they intersect between the two uh, dashed line. And finally, for the third uh, scenario, the solution is feasible if they intersect on the right hand side. As you can see, when the outskirt parking has, uh, is free and there is no uh, uh, charge for that, uh, we can see like two, two solutions which are feasible. And the solution of the first scenario are not feasible because they do not intersect on the left hand side. And when we look into the properties of the two feasible solution, we can see they are very similar in terms of characteristic. The speed in the downtown is relatively high, 
and then uh, we see in one of them that very few vehicle choose to cruise and the other one no one is choosing to cruise and in both cases uh, we see that the uh, most of vehicle are par parking out of scale and no one is going to park at home uh, and because the, we assume that the home in this example is uh, uh, located further than the uh, out of scale parking and the parking out of scale is free for instance in this case so there is no motivation for user to travel further back and park at home. When we increase the cost of uh, out of scale parking a little bit to half uh, dollar per hour in this numerical example we can see that the uh, first scenario solution is are still not feasible. But we can see that the second scenario in this case has two intersection and two generate two feasible solution. And finally, the, the last, uh, the third scenario also generate another feasible solution. And when we look into the properties of the solution here, we can notice that in one of the solution, the speed in the downtown is relatively high as a result of a huge number of cruising vehicles. In this case, we can see that the out of skirt parking does not use that much. And uh, in all of these uh, scenarios, a lot of vehicles are still going to park at home. So we can see that the, the properties of like the, the solution are very different in, in, uh, under the equilibrium. For instance, one of the solution has really, uh, is really bad in terms of like the speed in the downtown and congestion, while the other two solutions are similar to what we had previously in terms of like the speed and also the number of people choosing different options. And also we can see that even a slight increase in the uh, out of skirt parking cost motivates a lot of uh, uh, user to uh, send their vehicle further back to park at home. And which is which can be bad in terms of like vehicle might travel and the energy consumption. And finally, we increase the cost a little bit further to $1 per hour. And in that case, we can see that each of the different scenario generate a feasible uh, solution. Finally, the first scenario solution uh, intersect with line y equal to x on the left hand side and generate a feasible solution with a relatively low speed and a huge number of cruising vehicles and no one is parking out of scale. And also the second scenario here, one of the solution become infeasible and the other one is still feasible. And again, uh, you can see that the further increase in the cost of uh, parking out of scale can push more vehicle to uh, go uh, further and park at home. So uh, we also like um, look into the general case of the problem for a numerical example. And in this like numerical example, we consider that there is no toll in the downtown area and there is like a parking cost of $3 per hour and out of skirt parking is just $1 per hour. Uh, we, when we solve the parking choice model, we find that there are four different equilibrium which are very different in terms of their characteristics. And we list the, the, the characteristics of them in this table. As you can see in the first two row, uh, we have like a relatively low speed in the downtown as a result of a huge number of cruising vehicles. When we look into the indifference point for the user who choose cruising, we find that even in these cases, those who come to downtown to engage in activity time of very long, such as a commuting trip, still find cruising as a cheap option. And people uh, send their vehicle to cruise, even if they are uh, uh, coming to downtown to stay for six or seven hours. As a result of very low speed in the downtown, which decreased the cost of cruising, people are not motivated to send their vehicle to park in downtown or even out scared. And then the rest of vehicle are going to park at home. Because of the very low speed that we have in the downtown area and the high travel time, we can see that the background traffic is going to avoid coming to the downtown area. And they are choosing probably other roads. But on the other uh, side, when we have the two other solution, we can see that the speed is relatively high and the number of cruising vehicles are very low. In one of them, we do not see any person who are send their vehicle to cruise. And in the other one, only those who come to downtown to pick up or drop up something may send their vehicle to cruise. And in these cases, we can see that the vehicle are going to uh, choose parking in downtown or urban out of scale. And because of the relatively high speed in the downtown area, in these two solutions, we can see that there is a relatively high number of background traffic who come to the downtown and cross through the downtown area. When we uh, play a little bit with this numerical example and we, for instance, change the uh, 
uh, pro to one dollar per hour, we find that uh, in that case we would see only one uh, solution, which is very similar to the result of the last row of this table. So uh, we thought that the, the, the we need to like look into the, the how the social welfare changes with respect to the different uh, uh, policy parameters that the policymaker has. Here I, I'm showing the changes in the social welfare. I start by presenting the uh, right hand side figure. In this figure, we show how the social welfare changes with the uh, cost of parking in downtown area on the x axis and the cost of out skirt parking on the y axis for the case where we do not have any uh, congestion pricing toll. Uh, congestion toll. As you can see, when there is no uh, toll, the cost of parking in downtown cannot change the social welfare. It is because uh, the, the cost of parking cannot demotivate people from uh, uh, cruising in the downtown area and uh, solving the congestion problem. Also, the outer skirt parking can only shift the behavior of the user uh, who go out skirt between uh, choosing the uh, outer skirt parking or going further to home. And its uh, impact on the uh, uh, social welfare is very much. On the other side, when we look for the uh, how the on the left hand side, we show the changes in the social welfare for a different uh, uh, tolling in the downtown area on the y axis and the cost of parking on the x axis. You can see that the toll has a, a significant impact on the changes in the social welfare. And it's mainly because it is able to uh, regulate the behavior of the user and shift them towards the other uh, more sustainable uh, parking choices rather than cruising in that tunnel. And when that toll reach to some threshold, we can see that at that point, the cost of parking can play some role in uh, uh, changing the social welfare. So uh, it, uh, may, I, I can like summarize some of the, the findings that we uh, see. What would happen for the parking in the era of autonomous vehicle? So uh, we find that the parking choice of AVs may yield multiple equilibrium. Some are better in terms of social welfare and congestion, while others are really worse in that terms. For the numerical example that we check, fortunately we saw that the fourth one in terms of the congestion and the social welfare are not necessarily stable, which means that if the systems, uh, if those like uh, uh, states happen, the system may not stay there for a long time. And most importantly, uh, what we find was that previously some researcher and studies suggest that AVs might collaborate with each other to uh, intentionally slow down in the downtown areas to make a congestion, decrease the speed and decrease the cost of cruising. We find in our model, even when the users choose their parking choices selfishly and the vehicle do not cooperate with each other, still such a scenario might happen and need some uh, regulation to avoid such scenario. But what we can do in terms of policy to solve the uh, parking issues in the era of autonomous vehicle, we find that the uh, parking management such as pricing and provision can help, but their impact is very limited to discourage people from cruising. If we would like to discourage people from uh, cru choosing cruising over uh, parking, we need to have a time-based congestion pricing, which can uh, discourage people from cruising and making congestion in the downtown area. This time-based congestion pricing does not increase the parking cost of AVs, but it only uh, regulates the behavior of the user and shift the system towards a better uh, equilibrium solution. And this uh, parking, uh, 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 this time-based congestion toll also is not sufficient on its own and need to be supplemented by some parking pricing or parking supply. Before I get to uh, some of the future research direction, I would like to talk a little bit about this uh, uh, example or this part of the research that I did during my PhD at University of Toronto. If you are familiar, the University of Toronto is really uh, powerful in terms of agent-based simulation. And over there, we'll look into this problem using the agent-based simulation. On the left-hand side, uh, you can see a map of uh, downtown Toronto. For those of you who are not familiar, this area is the business district of uh, Toronto. University of Toronto is located in this area, and there are two uh, main highways which uh, bring a lot of, uh, uh, which connects the rest of the town to the downtown, and a lot of users use this 
uh, uh, highways to come to the downtown area. In Toronto, there, there is a survey every five years which they collect the information of the travel of the uh, population and uh, collect the information about uh, what they, uh, the origin and destination of their trip, the time that they do that trip, uh, and also the modes of their trip. We, used, we had such a information and we thought that if all the users who come to the downtown Toronto using their vehicle, are going to be uh, coming to downtown using their uh, uh, private AVs in future. What would happen? We run, and also the cost of parking in this downtown area is very different. For instance, the parking cost is really high in the business district and it is as high as around $20 per hour. And it is very low in the periphery areas or the areas which are not very uh, uh, safe and it's as cheap as $2 per hour. When we run uh, as agent-based simulation to see what users are going to do, we find that uh, in this uh, example, uh, the, the user who has like activity time of up to uh, around 20 minutes are finding cruising as the cheapest option if we do not do anything. And then users are going to send their vehicle to uh, compete for and search for those cheaper parking facilities. And we find that the user vehicle are going to travel on average around 12 minutes in the downtown area to uh, uh, reach to a parking facility. But that parking search time can increase to around 15 minutes and the vehicle might travel around 15 minutes in the downtown area to reach to a cheaper parking facility. To uh, avoid such a scenario to happen, we thought that if we have the same uh, cost of parking in the whole downtown area, then users do not have any motivation to send their vehicle to a further location for a cheaper parking. And then everybody is going to choose the closest parking facility, which might a little bit, uh, a little bit help in terms of congestion and the uh, total VKT. So we set the parking price in the downtown Toronto to be equal to the average cost of parking, which was around $6 per hour. And then we run again the agent-based simulation. We saw that because the, the uh, even cheapest parking has become a little bit more expensive, then in that case, more people find that uh, cruising is the cheapest option for them. And even we would see that the user who have the uh, activity time up to half an hour choose the uh, uh, cruising over the other option. As a result of this cruising vehicle, we would see an increase in the congestion. And even though the average travel time to the car parks uh, decreases because everyone choosing the closest parking facility, we would see an increase in the maximum travel time to the parking facility because sometimes users have to still to send their vehicle to a very uh, uh, far uh, parking facility due to the availability or even if there is no parking nearby and the network is congested. So the maximum travel time to the parking facility, we would see that it's increased. And also the BKT as a result of the cruising vehicles has increased by 1%. So we saw that that type of like parking pricing might not be really helpful. And in the distance of the parking facility from their destination that they send their vehicle and also the cost of the park. When we had a zero occupant toll in that, uh, simulation for a $1 per hour, we find that in that case, the maximum cruising time would drop to 15 minutes. Also, we would see a slight uh, decrease in the average travel time and maximum travel time to the parking facility. And uh, it can uh, decrease the total BKT in the downtown area by 3.5%. So uh, uh, now I, I just like mentioned some uh, future research direction and open the floor for uh, some questions. Uh, the model that I just presented is a, a static model, and the, the, uh, the benefit of a static model is that it can provide some of some insights, such as uh, the, the necessity of having a time-based toll, and also uh, like uh, uh, a congestion might even happen in a non-cooperative uh, behavior of autonomous vehicle. But if we would like to look into the operational level, we have we need to have a dynamic parking management model in which the controller can monitor the congestion and also the parking utilization in the real time and adjust the toll and also parking pricing accordingly, which we are doing uh, currently. Another future research direction is something that I would like to call it a community-based parking. But what I mean by community-based parking is that autonomous vehicle in the near future 
can sense their uh, surrounding even when they travel and not searching for parking. So AVs can uh, uh, collect an information about the parking utilization, the parking availability, and the location of these uh, uh, parking uh, availability. And we are interested to see how these parking information, the availability should be shared with different uh, uh, players in the, the, the uh, traffic, and also how these uh, information can change the parking search time and the decision of the uh, users in the near future. That being said, it bring my presentation to its end. Thank you for your time and consideration. I would be happy to answer any question or take any comments. Thank you, Sina, for your wonderful presentation. You sure run that applause for you. So we are now open uh, for uh, questions. We have already a few questions from Dr. Jack Haddad. Jack, would you like to ask your questions yourself? You can unmute yourself or I can ask them. So, let me ask questions. The first question is that right figure in page 11. Can you go to page 11? Uh, right figure in page. Is Sorry, maybe I, I made a mistake. Hi, it's not page 11. It's move forward, please. Okay, sure. Here or? No, no, more and more. With the example, numerical example, when you show the lower and upper dash lines. Okay. Yes. Okay. So the first case. You have some negative value for the lower bound. I, I didn't get it. I didn't understand how you can get lower value. Uh, I mean, a negative value for the lower bound. Okay, so that lower bound, it depends on the, like, as I said, the, the slope that we have for those scenarios. And it's a, a function of the input parameters. For instance, for the like first scenario, if I go back here, this, if we have like the, out of square parking to be free. So this term would be like zero. And then this term could be like a negative uh, value if we have like a toll in the downtown area. So that's happening for the negative uh, uh, limit. So depending can on the maybe, input. Can you maybe explain it in one sentence? Uh, one sentence physically, what does it mean? Again, because so, I didn't okay. get it. So physically, it means that for those input parameters, some scenario might not happen. So for instance, here in this case, we have like the first scenario happen if like the speed has like some uh, uh, threshold. And in that case, if like we have some input parameters, which gives us a negative uh, uh, threshold, means that such scenario would not happen at all. There is no physical meaning, it means that 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 uh, scenario is not feasible. Just okay. Um, then um, yeah, you maybe I will move to the second question. Maybe you already mentioned in the conclusion. So the question was, uh, how could you use this methodology in order to implement real-time control and management for AV parking? Yeah, so that's the future research direction that we are currently working. We, uh, as I said, that uh, model that I just presented was a static model, and we are currently working to uh, make that problem in terms of a dynamic setting to see how the parking management should be when the uh, situation change over time through the downtown area in terms of the parking utilization and congestion, and then the controller can adjust the prices accordingly. But we yeah, so do not have any result to present. But it's, I, I think Yeah, it's but like, some, some, some intuition, what do you need in real time to estimate or to do feedback 
uh, of state or of variables in real time in order to control based on the static model that you presented. So you have some. Uh, yeah, the state maybe is like the congestion in the downtown area and also the uh, parking utilization. If we have those things in the downtown area, then we can uh, use them to uh, uh, change the, the behavior of the, and for instance, to change the cost of parking throughout the day based on the time and the utilization of the parking. So when you say congestion in the area, you, do you mean the number of vehicles in the area? Yeah, 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 yeah. So based on the MFD. Uh, pardon me. Based on the MFD. Yeah, 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 yeah. Based on MFD, so we, and also in the dynamic setting, I think based on the number of people who are in the downtown area, not based on MFD. Yeah, so the, it is. It will be a tough question, maybe for the future. You need to think about it also. Uh, if you can control the system only with the total number of vehicles in the area, which is the N, or you need to dig down and to check the distribution of the N, as you mentioned, it's a sum of different destinations in the area. And uh, this is a tough question in terms of control. You need to think about it, even when you want to design it for the future. So just keep it in mind. Maybe the N, the total number of vehicles without distinguishing the destinations, uh, will will not be uh, enough to do uh, good control, or maybe yes. Uh, this is a question that you need to think about. It. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, thank you for the comment, and I highly really appreciate it to consider that one before we get really into that one. Hi, Sina. Um, I have a question. On your first slides, I think maybe nine or so, where you defined um, previous to the mathematical program. Yeah, that one. Okay. Yes. Mm, no. Next one, please. Maybe nine then. Yeah. Um, no, it wasn't this. Anyway, go to the, the mathematical so program. The units of X, so X is the flow, right? X is the number of users, or in terms of like... Number. Yeah. Number of users, so like an accumulation. The number of user with the activity time t. We assume that the the, the user activity time uh, follow a distribution, which we can uh, find the number of user with the activity time t as like uh, the total demand multiplied by the probability Wait. for. Yeah, I'm confused about the unit. So what is q? It, what are the units of q? It's total demand. It can be vehicle. So number of vehicles. Number of vehicles, yeah. It's not per hour. It's not a flow. It's it's like per the uh, study, uh, uh, the period of the study. So if you're studying the rush hour, four hour period, is the number of such users yeah. in so the we four can hour. Have like Yeah, it can be flow if we like consider it for like a mm -hmm. city state period of time. Or it can be like the number of vehicle. Right. Hey, but then equation six there. So n is the accumulation, right? Right. So there's something funny with the units then, because you're integrating number times time and times dt, so that the units would be time squared. So I'm not sure of the physics of this formulation. The unit should be according to the last term. What does it mean, Jack? Well, so yeah, all, all those three quantities, you have the same units, right? If you want to add them. Right. But now I don't know what Q is. Q is not a flow. So, so QB. 
in this yeah. case, like the uh, the those like x's are uh, number of vehicle per unit of time or per oh, study period. So it is. Wait, but no, you cannot have it both ways. Is it either a flow or it's a number, right? So, but even if it's a flow, then the units don't work either because you have this times t, which threw me off. Why do you have that time times t? Maybe, maybe that's a special time. You, you mentioned it's an activity time. So I'm really confused here. I, I I need to double check the, the units in the mathematical model, but I, 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 I'm sure that it works the way that we define it. And just it's in terms of like how we uh, define those. Right. So what is T then? You T is activity time. Activity time. Is yeah, activity what, is time. what is the difference between time and activity time? It's the same. There is no. It's time is be considered is a static model. So there is no time except the activity time of the user. So right. So can you define that? Is it the duration of his activity? T is the T is the duration of the activity. Like what activity, for example? For instance, if it's a commuting or coming to the downtown, how long? the user is going to be in the downtown is his activity time. How long he would be in the downtown? So it's not the same as the DT, right? D the T, yeah, the so T in the DT it is, it is. Yeah, DT is, it is, it's for the activity time. And it's uh, the integral is over the the activity time distribution from, for instance, the yeah. minimum activity time zero to the right. maximum activity time. T. I think the t is you don't need the t unless you define x as uh, something different. But anyway. My second question was, um, did you find like a um, parameter of the model that would explain most of what you see in the results of your simulations? Like maybe a ratio of the parameters of your model? Um, so maybe how many parameters do you have? Do you have a table showing them? I, I, I do not have a table now, but the paper I could find it it's a little bit taking time but the, the parameter that we have is like the uh, driving costs and the cost of parking in downtown and outskirts mm -hmm. and also the the toll these are some of the parameters can a little bit change the other ones are like the right. uh, the area and the density or the jam right. density which are fixed so, so for the first I I, I think to answer your question I think something which is important maybe is the uh, driving cost in comparison to the uh, cost of like parking in downtown and also outskirts, because uh, the cost of uh, driving I think is relatively lower than the uh, parking cost. We would see such, those results, and even in the future, if the autonomous vehicle are going to be electric, we would see even further drop in the uh, driving cost, and that causes uh, to see such a, a solution in which user decide to cruise uh, instead of parking because it can save some uh, money for them. Right. Okay. Very good. Thanks very much. Thank you for the question. So let's see if there are any other questions.
have yeah pursue two please go ahead unmute yourself um hi uh, my name is Farah thank you for the presentation it was very interesting um I, I think I just need to maybe it's a question and a comment at the same time um on on the same slide you have here I don't think there is an error or any misunderstanding of just integrating the, the, flow, the user function, the flow function over time for a certain time duration. So you're practically getting the average number of users in that time period um, for a certain network link or system. So I think that, that, that can clear up the confusion that happened a moment ago. Um, Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah, and yeah, but still, I need to like yeah, double check the the uh, the units to yeah clarify. Because you just so what are the units of x? It's like imagine you're integrating a volume delay function, but instead of the volume, you have users, right? And you're in. Right, the volume delay function, for example, you have time you integrate over volume. So here you're integrating over time in a certain time duration to get average numbers or expected values for the for the same function. But so why do you need the T? Because that's how you get the expected value. You have to multiply multiply the value by the function. Imagine like the function is the weight of that value. At every point, at every point, and at every point, at every instant in that time duration, zero t. But t is not the distribution. T capital T. I mean capital T. It's a oh. known time duration. No, I mean little t is the one that bothers me. The one that multiplies the x's. Um, I don't know. It's just when when you're calculating expected values, you integrate. So you get t is t is the variable here, right? And you multiply that variable by its uh, function value and you integrate it over the area or the interval uh, of interest, which is in this case zero capital T. Just getting the expected value of the function over that time period. Specified, it's a specified time period. So I don't know, maybe we can have that discussion later. Um, uh, but my my main question um, is on, on the parking pricing model. Um, um, you, you mentioned that it could have a considerable impact on, on parking behavior, but um, what, have you considered um, changes in the technology or in the parking infrastructure can also affect the pricing model, or is it a factor that you went over or, yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> Because you focused on pricing from a behavior behavioral point of perspective, but what if um, there are changes in the infrastructure, the technology of how parking is made in downtown? Would that also affect the pricing model and hence affect um, the parking requirements of autonomous vehicles? Okay, so uh, I, in one part of my PhD, we look into the changes in the parking infrastructure and how, for instance, automated vehicle can park uh, like a, a Tetris or like a valley parking uh, behind each other to increase the uh, supply of parking. And in the, the, so, uh, but the, the problem is that even if we have like a higher supply without the tolling in the downtown area, people are not going to choose those parking facility because uh, cruising is a cheaper option for them. So in this model, we try to capture that one. And even in the, the simulation of the downtown Toronto at that time, we look into the even uh, increasing the parking uh, and supply as a result of like the AVs can uh, 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 like uh, stack behind each other. And we saw still that the, the, it cannot solve the problem for the cruising because uh, even if we have a higher supply, uh, or either we have to provide a free parking to user. In that case, it can ha cause some other issues, for instance, uh, motivate more people to uh, drive to the downtown areas rather than uh, taking the other modes. But if we are going to have like some parking costs, 
and that parking cost is usually higher than the travel cost so user choosing cruising and uh, changes in the infrastructure cannot have any impact yeah, that's reasonable. Thank you for your answer. And again, it's a very interesting presentation. Thank you. Thank you. I, I think I have like some uh, answer for uh, Jorge. That like T uh, that we have is like, uh, is how long that like, you know, user with the activity time T is going to present in the downtown area. So it's just when we multiply that T, it means that that user is going to be there cruising for all like uh, the uh, duration of the activity. I'm not sure if it's... Okay. Confusing. Yeah, I admit it's a bit confusing. But yeah, I'll take your word for it. All right, <clears throat> if there's more questions. I think there was someone, Kianush, if you are there, you can ask a question. Hi, Sina. Uh, a great talk. I really enjoyed it. Uh, good to see you again. Uh, I just, I mean, I have a question about the other comments. I think I'm asking too much question about it. We can discuss later. But just la the last question about that. So. For my own understanding, X have a two-dimensional distribution. Is it comes from distribution? X uh, X comes from the uh, the uh, is the number of like user with the activity time. So it depends on the distribution of the activity times. So that T should have a subscript of C then, right? time of cruising because the activity time is equal to the time of cruising. Yeah. Right? Right, yeah, but we like, yeah, we can like use a subscript for that one, but because the uh, like time of cruising is like the same as the activity time of the user, so we keep it that way, we we'll use the same like notation. Thank you. Okay, I think there are, there are no more questions. So thank you again, Sina, for your presentation. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us today. We'll have uh, uh, very, very interesting presentations in the coming weeks. We have next week, we'll have a presentation by Dr. Jeff Ban of the University of Washington. So please uh, don't forget to join us next week at the same time, 11 a.m. Eastern time. Thank you, everybody, and have a good rest of the day. Thank you, Rafa. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, and also for attention, and thank you, Rafa, for giving me this opportunity. My pleasure.